Sphericon box by John Kelsey. This is a Sphericon, also called a twisted double cone. As you can see, it's a strange and intriguing shape. It's actually a solid of constant diameter. It rolls without any bumping, with bumpiness, but without any up and down. It's actually a twisted double cone. See, there's a cone, and there's the other cone. You twist, and it becomes the Sphericon. This particular example, the grain, the figure in the wood runs continuously all around it as if it was chipped out of one piece of wood, which it was actually. And it's a box, it opens like this, and inside there's a ball, and inside the ball there are Chinese fortune cookies, or cookie fortunes. Now, Here's, how, here's the thing that I, read, I learned that I realized about these. This is a chuck that you would use to make this in its cone shape. Double cone, double cone. It's inside the chuck. You can hold these two blocks in your uh, scroll chuck perfectly well. Hot glue this thing in here. And it'll stay while you uh, turn this end. Here's the thing. I make them like normally uh, other people make boxes. I make the inside first and then the outside. However, once you've made a chuck like this out of two blocks, you can also invert the chuck so it's like this. And now the Sphericon as Sphericon also sits down inside there. And that means using that chuck, you can chuck one half of the Sphericon which is exactly what I did to drill out the, for, the, for, the drill, for the magnet. And these blocks are not, no longer symmetrical they were when they began life. Uh, so with a spacer in there, or within a block that was actually uh, square in section, you would have a perfectly fitting chuck with hot glue for the Spiricon half. Isn't that intriguing? This is the gauge that uh, I've always used for, to make Spiricons. This is... Um, a right angle gauge, simply that. When the chuck is, has the chuck, there's a right angle. And when the Sphericon, there's a right angle on the Sphericon, there's another right angle. So in fact, it's a right angle double cone, a right angle in every dimension. In section this way, it is actually square. In section this way, it's round. And then when it's back to its double cone, uh, to its spherical state, it's uh, neither square nor round. This is its section this way. You see? Isn't it an interesting shape? And there's the square again from that view. It's a very interesting shape. That led to one of these. The spherical box. And you would never know from looking at these two halves that anything would really fit inside there. Um, it closes up to make a sphere. It's held with magnets. This was actually made from four blocks of wood. So here's a Sphericon box with uh, rather large veins, just as by way of illustration. It was an early one in the sequence. It drops in there, and that drops on there. So there is the Sphericon, like that, embedded within a sphere. Now there's another form of these that woodturners often make. These are by Peter Rand, a friend of mine in Ontario. He makes it, see what he does? He attenuates it. He carves out these spaces and he glues the two parts together. He calls these femispheres and they're made out of Banksia nuts. And this is a set of three. Very lovely little objet de art. And here's a page from one of David Springett's books giving the basic definitions of twisted cones, which he calls streptohedrons. Here's an example made by Jacob Weisflog at our 2017 Mid-Atlantic Symposium. The vice logs call these drunken boxes because of the way they roll on the table. 
the vice flogs use zebra wood and when I first started making these I used figured ash uh, which like the zebra wood allows the wood figure to follow across the two parts of the spherical box. Before long those boxes began to look garish to me and I re returned to my favorite woods, cherry, walnut and pear, where the figure is subtle but it still continues all the way around the box. It's just you have to discover it. It doesn't shove itself in your face. And fooling around with the uh, chucks for a while I realized I could make a cube with a spherical box inside. So here's a four part cube and a two part spherical box. And after making the cube, I began to make spheres with Sphericon boxes inside, such as this example, also made in fall of 2017. This Sphericon cube actually breaks down into eight sections, each identical, that fit around the Sphericon, and are all held together with magnets. And finally, I made a box elder cube with a sphere, not a spherecon inside. Both the cube and the sphere break down into eight identical parts each. And if you really study on the wood figure, you can get it back together. So every single piece is exactly where it was when it grew inside the tree. And finally, here's a PDF I made that shows the uh, sequence for making the basic Sphericon box. You start with two blocks of wood carefully dimensioned, hollow them out with a tenon and a recess that accepts the tenon to make the, to make the spherical box inside the two blocks. Next you rotate one of the blocks 90 degrees uh, and then fasten them together using Turner's tape with pressure from the lathe tailstock and finally rotate them 90 degrees in the other plane so the tape together join is parallel to the ways of the lathe. Now turn the block into a cylinder that's just as long as it is large in diameter. Mark the center line and turn the cone on one end. Then make the jam chuck, reverse the block, use hot glue to hold it in the jam chuck and turn the cone on the other end. Sand and finish and maybe install some magnets and you're done.